Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday in ordinary time. And as always, our Masses are celebrated for the intentions of those who've asked us to pray for them, but also for all your intentions. Knowing that we are loved by God, although we are sinners, we come before the Lord, asking the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my mischievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Has not man a hard service upon earth, and are not his days like the days of a hireling, like a slave who longs for the shadow, and like a hireling who looks for his wages? So I am allotted months of emptiness, and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing till the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never again see good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Broken How good to sing psalms to our God. How pleasant to chant fitting praise. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and brings back Israel's exiles. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord who heals the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted. 
he binds up all their wounds. He counts out the number of the stars. He calls each one by its name. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Broken hearted. Our Lord is great and almighty. His wisdom can never be measured. The Lord lifts up the lowly. He casts down the wicked to the ground. Praise, Praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my preaching I may make the gospel free of charge, not making full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all, then I might win the more. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by, my, by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Christ took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever, and immediately they told her of him. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she served them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons and the whole city was gathered together about the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, a great while before day, he rose and went out to a lonely place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him followed him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all the Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The question addressed in Rabbi Harold Kushner's 1981 book, When Bad Things Happen to Good People, is on all our minds. In a world marked by COVID, growing unemployment and poverty caused by the former, which adds to existing public service corruption and the spread of irrational populist politics, it is not inappropriate to wonder what the hell God is up to. Our world and all the resources we use to make sense of it, the rule of law, reaching out to others in love, the routine of work, and for religious people, the opportunity to worship together is on lockdown. Where is God 
when you need God. Many of us, I suspect, feel a bit like Job, the central character in our first reading today, suffering for reasons beyond our control. In many cases, too, sick without an apparent cure in sight, overwhelmed. The book of Job is a work of genius. It takes a classical story. The hero suffers adversity but keeps the faith and is rewarded by God and then subverts it. While never denying God's existence, Job rejects all the pious platitudes we all too often drag out to explain away suffering and the apparent indifference, or according to Swiss psychologist Carl Jung, the evil face of God. Job systematically demolishes such rationalizations, that suffering is the result of one's sins, whether known or unknown, that God works in mysterious ways and we must just accept things as they are, and that we must adopt a position of piety, humility, contrition from what we may have done, so as to win God's love back, prove oneself worthy, and sit back and wait for divine reward. Job's genius, hinted at in the all-too-short excerpt we read today, is that he refuses to accept such empty rationalizations and yet keeps faith by challenging his own understanding of God. Once again, and here you'll have to read the whole book to get this message, Job does this in two ways. First, he focuses on lived reality, not some fake news packaged to keep him from thinking clearly. We see this in his relentless observation of his experience, months of emptiness, nights of misery. The temptation, his and ours in our situation, is to rationalize this, to fool himself and ourselves that the situation is not so bad. It's the temptation, I suspect, of many preachers to do the same, to soft-soak the situation, to offer reassurances that make congregations feel good. At worst, to offer a biblical explanation that alleges the current crisis is a divine judgment for some or other collective sin, usually the preacher's particular moral hobby horse. Infidelity to the evidence, limited as it is. Infidelity to the reality of our experiences of suffering in these times. And infidelity to a God far more complex and unknowable than is dreamt of in even our most sophisticated theology. I'm not going to do this. Just as Job didn't know and never knew the whole rather sinister story behind his suffering, a divine wager about whether Job would keep faith in the face of suffering, and just as he sits in this text honestly expressing his suffering, we must sit with reality. We must sit, however impatiently. And the real job, Job, by the way, is nothing if not angrily impatient with God and less and his less than helpful friends. We must sit with reality as it is. But is that all? Let's look briefly at the practice of Jesus and Paul in our readings today. Two themes emerge here that might help us. Service and flexibility. In the midst of his context, Jesus' mission entails an ever-widening practice of service. Jesus does not spend his time pondering the nature of the world, trying to understand God, God's role in suffering, let alone blaming the people he sees and heals for their conditions. He gets out there and does things, whatever he can, to alleviate human suffering. With Paul, we see a remarkable degree of flexibility, a willingness to adapt himself and his thinking to proclaim the risen Christ. Historians of Paul point out how the father, former Saul, moved away from his earlier legalism. Apart from a few basic moral principles, like Jesus, who always called on his disciples to seek the spirit of the law beyond the letter and its application to real human circumstances, Paul readily embraced diversity of practices so long as they led people closer to God. So then, are Jesus and Paul an answer to Job, if I may borrow the title of Jung's famous book? Yes and no. If read as a kind of 
get over it and do something or fake it till you make it, my answer is a resolute no. It is unhealthy and unhelpful to deny the reality of suffering and indeed the mystery of why God allows it. Even the argument advanced by theologians like Irenaeus of Lyon that suffering builds character or soul is problematic. Experience tells us that for many, it is soul-destroying. The terrible truth we must face, too, is that we don't know why God allows suffering. Yet, and here the answer is a strong yes, the model of service we see in Jesus, and even expressed secularly in Albert Camus' novel, The Plague, is a kind of answer. We must choose action over paralysis even if we may not know that our actions will prove fruitful. Given that we may not know whether these actions are fruitful, we must also embrace flexibility. Flexibility in what we do, how we interpret events, and flexibility in how we relate to others. Not easy, I know. Even, dare I say it, flexibility in how we think we understand the mystery of God. And so let us embrace that mystery of God by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And having professed our faith, We bring before the Lord our prayers and concerns on this day. We pray for all who have died in this present epidemic. We pray for their families and friends who mourn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all health carers at this time those who work in hospitals, and those who care for their loved ones at home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for medical researchers who are working on vaccines, for those whose research helps us to understand the causes of plagues and viruses. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are engaged in vaccine rollout, for pharmaceutical companies, that they may prioritize health over wealth, for public health officials, that they will decide who gets the vaccines first with integrity and wisdom, without self-interest or corruption. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us bring before the Lord all our other needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, we come before you in this time of confusion, embracing you, though we do not always understand your ways. We ask you to hear the prayers we have made before you, made here present and made in every heart, Lord. And we make all these prayers through
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Through this mingling of water and wine, may we come to share in the community of him who shared our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands. But it come for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Booty, our Archbishop, Duncan, his auxiliary, and all who minister to your glory. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially all those who have succumbed to the coronavirus. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. As the Lord has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Offer each other a sign of peace, obviously socially distanced. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my brothers and sisters, the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world, how blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you under my roof, but let me say the word, and I shall shall hear it. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.